So, Eric, David, and Andy, I'm going to be testing the product that you sent. I'm going to be doing this piece with your product. It's board and it has oil paint on it, paper. Those are some common things that people will be using with this. I guess the user is always going to have to put gloves on. It would be nice to tell them they didn't have to and it could wash off easily. That would be the best product if they didn't have to wear gloves. So these are some other tests that I've had from people. This is an epoxy resin. It's too yellow. This isn't even that bad. I want to be able to package this in a clear bottle so that people can see how clear it is because that's a huge concern. So this is the resin and it's cloudy. It has to be clear for this to really sell. This is a polyurethane that someone sent. It took way too long for it to harden and I want it to be a half hour-ish. This is a year old product, right? And look at how yellow that is. Now this one was very low toxicity. Can't. It's horrible, look at that. Yeah, and that's your label that you made up, right? Yeah, this is a 16 ounce, so it'd be one to one ratio, 32 ounce, half gallon, half gallon. So the one gallon kit, and that's called the studio kit. This is one gallon and one gallon, and this is called the professional kit. Every once in a while, there's someone who wants a lot more. We also want to maybe have like five gallon pails available for them. So this is the main one that people are using for this. Artists seem to like it. It says EX74 with a UV stabilizer. So it's supposed to help it not yellow over time. The resin's never really a problem, but always, see it slightly amber. How old is that? This is less than a year old. It's going to be poured and be very thin. It'll still be clear, it'll look very clear. I want to package this in totally clear packaging so that you can see it and see that it looks like water. Clear and environmentally friendly would be amazing. I'm thinking what we can maybe do is something like this. It would be nice if it was bigger and flatter. And then put them in a box. So we'll have very minimum labels on here saying what part it is. And then do all of our branding on a box that will get printed somewhere and sent to you for packaging. We can make it look so much better than this. So we'll test this stuff. And I'm going to open the window. Now, hopefully, again, I would like to have a product that people don't have to open a window for. Then people aren't concerned about how bad it is for them. So I want something that's actually not bad for people. So I'm going to open a window because I don't know anything about this. When I'm doing this not for the camera, I would wear this. Not it. Drainless for the user. The person who's never used this before has to be able to open it, measure them the exact same, mix them together, pour it, and be done. We'll end up color coding everything too, so that it's just foolproof. So I'm just going to do that because I'll probably forget what one goes with what. And B is green today. Here's A. It's very liquidy. Yeah, perfect. This is what we need. It'd be nice too if the packaging could have markers on it so that people can just measure by looking at the bottles. But I'll take care of all that stuff. It smells like every other resin or every other hardener. This is B, the hardener, the one we've always had problems with. Amber, yeah, it's amber. It's too yellow. If you mix it, it'll dilute that yellow. Doesn't matter. This is what the, this is what the customer sees on the shelf. Right. So be hardener, like the vis viscosity looks great. This is pretty much exactly what we have right now. So. So everything looks the same as our current resin. It's good. I don't know. Does that look thinner? Yeah. Yeah, it might be a bit thinner. It'll be crystal clear when it's poured over a full surface but it's about just the way the consumer thinks about it. The way the consumer looks at it and says, you know, in this container it's not fully clear. I don't want to use that on my art. If it's non-toxic and clear, then it's got all the other properties we need. Maybe a bit thicker. Use a blowtorch. Okay. I've gotten the best results with the blowtorch. It's going to be perfect. Last, I'm just going to wipe the drips off the side one last time. And then any other drips that I find tomorrow, I'll probably use a hand file and take them out. And then we'll have the perfect resin. So I'm going to get out of here. We're going to go upstairs and I'm going to go over some pieces that we did in the past and talk about what worked and what didn't. Glass, perfect, 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 right? Crystal clear, so you don't see the white is pure white. If you keep it out of the sun, it will stay pure white, but we want to make sure it stays crystal clear forever. I just want to talk through some paintings that I've done with the epoxy resin before, just so you can get to know the product a bit and see exactly what we're looking for. So it's oil paint, and then this is wax. It's called encaustics, and then I resined over it. This product worked very well, except it's turning pink. So it might be the paint, or it might be the resin. And this one is probably five years old, four years old. It stayed very, very clear 
So it is possible. This one's perfectly white, and it was, it's with the product that we're selling right now. Lots of whites will be able to see if just colors. Now these were peacock feathers that were much brighter before, and when we put the resin on, you know, natural pigments, leaves, bugs, feathers, it makes it look soaking wet. And I don't think that's bad for most things, because it brings out the color. But for something like this, maybe there's a product in the future that can seal it first and then put resin over so that you don't get the discoloring of natural items. And this is just the last one I'm going to talk about. So this one's done on wood, and same thing, collage, paper, oil, and ink. It is yellowing, and this one's probably two or three years old as well. Here, down the bottom there. Yeah. That's it. Thanks so much for the first round. I'm looking forward to the next one. For answers to all your questions about art resining, just visit the FAQ at artresin.com, and you can buy stuff there too. So we're always making new videos. If you like, you can subscribe, and we'll see you next time.